Welcome to Nancy's Notions. Say goodbye to ill-fitting patterns. With the help of my newest book, Pattern Fitting with Confidence and the companion DVD, you'll be able to adjust any garment pattern to fit your body. Here's a preview. I've been teaching pattern fitting for most of my sewing career and I have found the technique that works the best for me is with pivot and slide techniques. No, it's not a dance step. It's a way of changing the pattern, pivoting to make width changes, sliding to make length changes. Pattern Fitting with Confidence, the 28-page book, and the accompanying DVD feature all the techniques that I've used for years. We start out by finding the right pattern size, taking a simple measurement, which I call the right pattern size. There's a new graph and a simple measurement showing to take the measurement across the body, not around the width so that if you gain weight or lose weight, you don't have to worry about changing pattern sizes. We'll then show you how to compare your patterns after taking the measurements, have a personal fitting chart for a very quick reference, and then all of the pivot and slide techniques of all the pattern pieces and changes that I could think of. It's a very simple approach, a logical approach. Now if you're wondering what just is pivot and slide, I'd like to show you the basic techniques. No, I'm not going to go through all of the processes, but I want you to see the confidence that you can gain by working with this simple technique. The tools that you'll need for pivot and slide techniques and pattern fitting with confidence is some pattern tissue paper or wax paper would work well too. You'll need some pins for pivoting, two different colors of marking pens, a scissors and of course a valuable tape measure. After taking your measurements, placing them in the book in the chart and comparing your measurements on the on the charts, then you'll be able to know the changes that you'll need in some of the patterns. Keep in mind, if it's not more than a half of an inch, don't bother with the change. Just think what a piece of chocolate cake can do. On this pattern, I'm going to assume that I'm going to need to slightly increase the bust line and also the waistline. Now if you're thinking, well, why would you do that? Why not buy a larger pattern size? Often if you buy a pattern to fit your ins and outs, it will be too large in the shoulder area. It's very difficult to change the neck, the shoulder, and the armhole. Very simple to pivot in and out. Whatever you need to increase, let's say it would be an inch, you divide that needed increase by four because we have two seams or four cut edges. And that fourth of an inch would be added at each side of the bust line. If you would need, for example, two inches at the waistline, you would add a half of an inch at each waistline and measure out a little bit more accurately than I'm doing, but measure out on your paper so you have your marks. The pin is next, and you're going to pivot, placing the pin a one step above the needed change. So that step is the shoulder area, and I'm placing the pin where the stitching lines cross. And this is where the term pivoting comes to being. It's like the pendulum on a grandfather clock. I'll pivot the pattern to meet the increased change. Now the red pen is going to be used to trace the new cutting line between the shoulder and the underarm. Then the pin is placed at the underarm where the stitching lines cross and you pivot to meet the change at the waistline. So all the pattern lines are aligning. Now you'll notice I'm not changing the shape of the lines, I'm just changing their position so the sleeve will fit in perfectly. Here we have the change, and I'll just fill in that line a little bit, and there's the change to the back piece. Whatever you have done to the back, you can do to the front with the same pivot. If you needed to make the bust line smaller, you'd simply pivot in the opposite direction. Like that grandfather clock, the pendulum moves in both directions. Now I'll pivot at the underarm to the waistline. And within seconds, I would have the change needed. Notice I never changed or cut the pattern piece. I simply just moved it and I would tape the new changes from the tissue right to the pattern. The same techniques will work with a sleeve. In changing the width of the sleeve, which is very common to have it's just a little bit too snug, this time instead of changing the, or dividing the needed change by four, you divide by two. If you needed one inch, a half of an inch would be added on either side of the sleeve. The pin is placed at the large dot at the cap of the sleeve, and you pivot to meet the increase. Now notice the sleeve is not changed. 
the cap, the cutting line is identical to what it was before. It's just a little bit wider. Now trace the other half of the cap. It's amazing what one inch will do to a fit of a sleeve. And then draw the side seams. And I'm kind of roughly sketching this out. Take a little bit more time to do this change. The sleeve will fit into the armhole of the top and you'll have a better fitting sleeve. So you can fit your sleeves with confidence. Now these are changes to increase the width or change the width. The next step is a little teaser on how you change lengths. The length of a pattern, the length of the crotch line, which we're going to do in pants. The most common request I get, how do you get the pants to be longer through the middle? You can slide the pattern up and down just like a window. I've already traced the shape of the inside. You'll be required in the book or ask in the book to measure through your body, compare it on the pattern, and then make the changes both to the front and the back piece. Let's say you needed to add a length of, oh, an inch and a half. We have two pattern pieces, so we're just going to divide that needed increase in the length by two. So three-fourths of an inch on the front piece, the same three-fourths of an inch on the back piece. We're just going to change the length. Also in pattern fitting with confidence, I'll show you how to combine measurements, but this just gives you a taste of the length and the change. Since I have the grain line marked on my tissue pattern, I'll simply slide the pattern down the longer length. And then you'll see that this will scoop out that length, but yet maintaining the shape of the point. Now when cutting this out, I would simply fold this back and use the red cutting line. And I would taper that all the way down. On the back piece, the same change would occur. I would slide the pattern down to, along the grain line to the shorter or the longer length, excuse me, and scoop out this length. And this gradually tapers it back to the original line. You can see how this has been lengthened to give more room through the middle of the body. So slide for length changes, pivot for width changes. In Pattern Fitting with Confidence and the DVD, I review these changes for tops, for dresses, skirts, and pants. This companion is the perfect solution if you have a little problem with fitting. I hope you'll enjoy. I'm sure that you can see that with the help of my book and the DVD, you can fit patterns with ease using tried and true pivot and slide techniques. Pattern Fitting with Confidence book and DVD, if you order today, it will be on its way.